All right, we've been talking about how to price stocks. Uh, I have the two models that we've been using, the dividend discount model, which is this first model, and the second model is the dividend growth model. Now recall, the price of any asset in finance is equal to the sum of the present value of the asset's future cash flows. So just like in the bond pricing formula where we discount or find the present value of the coupons, as well as the present value, the face value of the bond. Here we're finding the present value of the company's dividends and we're adding the present value of the face value of the stock at some period in the future. Okay, uh, and, and so we, we've reviewed this, we've discussed this uh, in, in previous videos. We've made the assumption that if the dividends are growing at a constant rate of G, a growth rate G, and if the re return required by shareholders is greater, than that growth rate, then the price of this stock can just be equal to the next period's dividend divided by R minus G. Well, what happens if the company doesn't pay a dividend? For instance, Google uh, doesn't pay a dividend. Uh, if Google doesn't pay a dividend, then the price of this uh, stock uh, should be zero according to the dividend growth model or should be equal to the present value of the future price of this stock at some time in the future. Well, we don't know what the price of the stock is going to be in the future. And if we did, we wouldn't need some math to figure it out, right? So uh, uh, anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to introduce a new concept about how to price stocks that don't pay dividends, all right? And what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the cash flows to equity holders. So FCFE is the free cash flow to equity holders. Next period. We're going to take the, just like we took the present value of the dividend, we're going to take the present value of these cash flows that come to, to, uh, to, the, ca to the equity holder. Okay, So all we're going to do here is we're going to substitute in free cash flow to equity holders in for the dividends in the previous model. Do you see that? Now, th these, are fr these aren't free cash flow to equity holders per share. These are free cash flow to all equity holders. And so instead of getting the price of the stock, we get the market value of total, the total market value of equity or the price of all of the equity outstanding. Does that make sense? So just like we uh, substitute in the dividends here, we get the market value of all the equity to get the price per share. We divide the market value of all the equity by the shares outstanding. So all we're doing is we're substituting in the, uh, the free cash flow to equity holders for the dividends, and then we're dividing that by the shares outstanding to get the price per share. Now it's important to note, what are free cash flow to equity holders? Okay, So free cash flow to equity holders are going to be net income. We're going to add back in depreciation. Now, now keep in mind, net income is going to be earnings that the firm experiences, and these are free cash flow to the owners of the firm. So we have earnings that, that happen after we paid off all of our expenses. We're going to add back in depreciation. Okay, sorry, I spelled that wrong. We're going to add back in depreciation because depreciation is a non-cash expense. In the income statement, we take out depreciation uh, earlier uh, so that we can pay less taxes. All right. We're then going to subtract out capital expenditures, CapEx, where CapEx is the difference or the increase in net fixed assets, right? So again, the firm is buying, using some of its capital to buy fixed assets. We're going to subtract out uh, CapEx uh, as an expense or cash flow that is taken out of uh, that that equity holders experience. We're also going to... Uh, take out the change in networking capital okay where networking capital is equal to current assets minus current liability so think of think of uh, we're, we're dealing with short changes in short-term assets here and changes in long-term assets here the firm is spending capital on long-term assets and short-term assets and we need to take those out of cash flow that is experienced by the the shareholders Lastly, we uh, add back in an increase in net new debt. Okay, The increase in net new debt, now uh, in this class you're not going to have to calculate free cash flow to equity holders, but I, I want you to think about what is, what is the cash flow that the equity holders or the owners of the firm get. 
Okay, we get earnings. We're going to add back in depreciation because it's a non-cash expense. We're going to take out expenditures on long-term assets. We're going to take out expenditures on short-term assets. But then we're going to add back in the increase in net new debt. Why? Because that's new capital from debt holders and not equity holders. And that's new capital that can be spent on some of this stuff. So this is an approximation for the cash flows that, uh, that uh, owners of the firm would experience. When we don't have dividends or when we would prefer to otherwise, we're going to substitute these cash flows. We're going to forecast these cash flows in here uh, and substitute them in where dividends used to be. right? And then we're going to divide by shares outstanding to get the price per share. Okay. Now, it's important to understand. You're not going to do this for an introductory course, but it, it, it's important to understand. How would you get the cash flows in the next period. We're forecasting these cash flows for n periods in the future. How would you get those? Okay, We're going to calculate free cash flow to equity holders using information from financial statements, income statements, and balance sheets. How, how would we go about uh, getting those cash flows next year and the year after? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to forecast what we call uh, pro forma uh, financial statements. So forecasting pro forma financial statements is very difficult, right? What we're going to do is we're probably going to put all of the accounts on the balance sheet and income statement in the percent of sales, right? So we're going to common size all of the, the financial statements. So for instance, you'll get current assets, you'll put it in the percent of sales, you'll get fixed assets, put it in the percent of sales and so on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take forecasts of sales and then repopulate those financial statements last year based on the percent of sales of each account this year. So this is a, a, a quick way that someone might go about forecasting uh, financial statements. You're not going to have to do this in this class, but those interested in uh, studying finance further, uh, that's, that's how we go about forecasting these financial statements. Once the financial statements have been forecasted, calculating free cash flow to equity holders becomes easy. We substitute those cash flows in for where the dividends used to be. We divide by shares outstanding to get the price per share.